the poem I Cannot Live With You by Emily Dickinson is one of the longest poems. And while reading the poem, we have seen that the first lines of this poem are full of confused emotion. The speaker turns down a romantic proposal, not because... Uh, uh, he or she does not love the person in question but because the speaker loves the companion too much I cannot live with you the speaker tells this person because it would be life and then, the, then a hyphen is put there so these first lines suggest that there is something both, both simple and overwhelming, very overpowering about the speaker's love for the person he or she is speaking to. To live with the companion would mean nothing more nor less than life itself. But the persona does not speak. They have uh, uh, access to life. Life is something that is permanently over there. If that is the case, the speaker must be living something that is not quite a life now. And uh, I, <clears throat> I want uh, you to look at this expression. I cannot live with you and it would be life. So using... <clears throat> Using um, two forms of speech, like live is an action, verb, life is a noun. In literature, it is called polyptron, P-O-L-Y-P-T-O-T-O-N. In poetry, uh, a figure of speech that we were discussing the other day in the class. So we see when poet uses this polypton of live and life, it points out the speaker expects to go on living that half life in the future without the companion he or she cannot live with. We can understand that the speaker cannot live with the companion and cannot live without the companion. So this is a kind of very terrible, awful situation and the speaker is stuck into this. So there is this feeling of, of being very choked, choked off, this kind of predicament, this situation, because we have seen the image of very tidy, civilized sexton, the church warden, uh, especially the one who is in, in the charge of a graveyard. This person who raises uh, shadows of both holy pious, propriety, decorum, death has a logged shelf and the keys with himself. So the life the speaker and the companion could live together is not just logged up in that shelf but behind it as if it has fallen down the back. One way or another this life is out of reach and out of bounds. Uh, if if we look uh, closely at at uh, the rhyme, the rhythm of this poem, it also shapes, uh, it also mirrors the dilemma of the speaker, because the first few lines have odd jolting rhythm, like we uh, we talked about iambic med. Uh, meters earlier we we see in this poem there is in the beginning of the poem iambic trimeter so what is that a, a, a line when it has three iams unstressed stressed this is the metrical feed so when we have be behind so we see the first syllable of this word behind b be is unstressed and hind is stressed and then we see there is iambic diameter so dia you know two two iams so if we see the first two lines i can not live with you it would be life 
So how do we see the rhythm in here? I is unstressed, can is stressed, unstressed, stressed, and then not is unstressed, live is stressed, with is unstressed, you is stressed. So it goes, I cannot live with you. Remember in the earlier previous classes, I told you that when there is this iambic a meter, you have the tune like da dum da dum. Uh, and and as all of us are familiar with the sonnets or Shakespeare, so we see that uh, these kind of meters are quite uh, common. So we we see uh, uh, in those uh, meters we have this iambic pentameter five am five I am I am's in a row. So here we see that the, to show the confusion, there is this mixture of rhythm, right? Another thing to notice in this poem is the confusion in the poem's shape. Uh, in the beginning of the poem, the reference is to the sexton who keeps the keys to the shelf. Uh, and we see that this poem has enjambments. E-N-J-A-M-B-M-E-N-T-S. Enjambments is another figure of speech. It, it, it refers to when, when in a sentence the pause is not maintained. It is continuously taken to the other, another line, to the coming line. And sometimes enjambments occur across stanzas. So, and then there are uh, line breaks also. There is more than one way to interpret these first words. So that also uh, creates so much of depth, so much of thought in the poem. So uh, as, as students of literature, we need to see symbols used in a literary text. Right now we are refer we are uh, reading, we are understanding this poem. So we see in the beginning of the poem we have symbols named the sexton and the housewife. Uh, it, it surely leads to some kind of mystery because um, when we when we understand it as a mystery, it might symbolize the power and oppression of the church and society. This is what the poet tries, the re, tries to assert. A, a sexton is a cha, church warden with special particular responsibility for the graveyard. When the speaker describes a sexton who keeps the key to the cupboard where their life is stashed away like a cup. So there is this suggestion that both piety, uh, holy elements and the threat of death prevent them from being with their companion, with the lover or beloved. So the speaker's later uh, worries, anxieties about religion and deathbeds uh, bear this reading out. And for that matter, the cracked cup that is their shared life uh, would be thrown out at once by any housewife who would prefer, uh, I quote, a newer Severus. So a newer, I told you that when some, um, some utensil is absolute, uh, obsolete or it's old, it's broken, then a housewife prefers a new replacement. So here in this poem, this Severus is a French teacup. So this him image hints that there is something not quite respectable about the speaker's love because polite society would reject it, seeing it as unseemly. So together these images, these symbols, the sexton and the housewife suggest that all of society, whether it is religious, secular, male, female, disapproves of and forbids the relationship between the speaker and the and his or her companion.